Hey everyone, it's Gina and welcome back to my channel. Today in the Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist, we're going to be talking all about how to pre-poo. It kind of has a funny name, but a pre-poo treatment is basically an oil or a hair mask that you do before you shampoo your hair. The purpose of a pre-poo treatment is to prevent breakage, prevent protein loss from your hair, prevent hygro fatigue, especially if you shampoo your hair a lot and you wash your hair a lot, it's gonna help protect your hair, and overall just helps reduce tangles and breakage. If you have dry, damaged hair, it's especially important to use a pre-poo oil before you shampoo to help prevent breakage. If you have high porosity hair, then your hair easily loses its protein and you get those chips in your cuticle, which result in split ends and breakage overall. So using that oil first is gonna help protect the hair from shampoo. Even if you use a low poo or a sulfate free shampoo, it's still causing that friction when you are massaging your scalp and the suds and shampoo still causes that friction and breakage in your hair. So overall, it's best to dry detangle your hair. You might be saying dry detangle with curly hair. What the heck are you talking about? Basically, if you detangle your hair when your hair is wet in the shower, it's more prone to breakage. Our hair is so weak when our hair is wet, it can break very easily, especially if you have damaged high porosity hair like mine and I have a lot of breakage in my hair, and this is one thing that I have changed up in my routine that has definitely helped with the damage in my hair. I always used to just lather on conditioner when I detangle, and you might think that it's easier to detangle when your hair is wet, but in reality, you just are not feeling that breakage happening because you have all that conditioner and water in your hair, but your hair is so fragile when it's wet, the cuticle is more raised, and when the cuticle is more raised, it's more prone to tangling because it's more of like a jagged edge and not as smooth. So the hair is sticking together and tangling. Whereas opposed to if you detangle when your hair is dry, the cuticle is already sealed. It's not swelled with water. And so you're able to work with it a lot better. Pre-pooing is also great if you are somebody that has to wash your hair a lot, or if you are a swimmer and you're in the water or in the ocean a lot, because adding that oil before you shampoo is gonna help prevent your hair from dehydrating with shampooing a lot. So it can help prevent water loss and protein loss from your hair when you're shampooing. There are two types of oils. There are penetrating oils and sealing oils. And then there's also oils that are in between that penetrate somewhat into the hair and they also help seal the cuticle. So which type of oil should you choose for a pre-poo treatment? So I will list all of these out on the blog post guide that I have with the video. It'll be linked in the description box down below so you can refer to that sort of like a cheat sheet. So I'm gonna show you some examples that I have of oils that I like to use as a pre-poo treatment and why. So the first one that I have is from Mish. If you haven't heard of Mish Beauty, I will definitely put their website down below. It's a smaller brand. They have really great moisturizer products, especially if you have like type four hair. They have great moisturizing stylers and deep conditioners that I love, um, but this is their polished hair and scalp oil. This has argan and hobo hobo oil in it. So it has a penetrating and sealing oil and then it does have a sealing oil in it, which is the hobo hobo oil. So reading the ingredients, the first one is sweet almond oil, which is one of the ones that I listed off as a penetrating and sealing oil. This also has safflower oil in it extra virgin olive oil, argan oil, apricot kernel oil, hobo hobo oil, which is lower on the list, and vitamin E oil. So this doesn't have any silicones or anything, no mineral oils or synthetic or artificial colors. So here's another option from the drugstore. This is from the brand Curls. This is the Blueberry Bliss Hair Growth Oil. So this also has ingredients in it that are supposed to help with hair growth. So another great oil for pre-poo treatments. This one has soybean oil, sunflower seed oil, castor seed oil, which I think the castor seed oil is what's supposed to help with hair growth, organic blueberry seed oil, olive fruit oil, pomegranate seed oil, coconut oil. So lots of really great penetrating and some sealing oils in this as well. It's pretty light, so I think this is a good option. If you do have low porosity hair or very fine hair that you don't want to get weighed down, I think this one would be good because the first one is that soybean oil, so I think it's a little bit lighter um, in texture than the Mish one. So if you want to try using a deep conditioner instead of an oil, this one is also from Mish. This is their Indulge Moisturizing Deep Conditioner. This has honey and babibasu oil in it. So that's one of those oils. It's supposed to be really great if your hair tends to get weighed down. This is a protein-free deep conditioner, so it's just moisturizing. Um, I personally don't like to deep condition before I shampoo because I feel like I'm just shampooing out all of that goodness, but if you're somebody that gets 
way down hair very easily, then that could be an option to try. I would just kind of dampen your hair a little bit and then apply it and then finger detangle with the deep conditioner. Um, this also has aloe leaf juice in it. It has that um, babasu seed oil, olive fruit oil, castor oil, and some other good moisturizing ingredients. So that's another option, although I do recommend using oils because they give you some more slip when you are dry detangling. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to pre-poo your hair. So right now I'm starting off with hair that is extremely tangled. This hair has been up in a bun. I think I'm on day six or seven hair, which I normally don't go that long, but I was trying to hold off on my wash day, so and I was staying home, so I didn't mind waiting. So my hair is very tangly at this point. I haven't refreshed my hair. I think I only refreshed once or twice in the past week. So you can see how tangled it is. So this is definitely gonna take some work. I would not wanna go right in and shampoo this hair. It would tangle up so bad. Shampoo just raises the cuticle in your hair, so you don't want to be doing that on your hair that's already tangled. It's just gonna cause a bigger mess. So I'm first starting off with dry hair. We're going to dry detangle this hair, which sounds crazy, but when you have that oil in your hands, it really is not that bad. I'm first gonna section off my hair. It really helps to section your hair, especially if you have very thick hair. It's very hard to just go right in and detangle all your hair at once. So I definitely recommend trying sectioning it off. Be very gentle when you are pulling apart your sections as well. You don't want to hear any snapping or breakage. So I'm first applying the Miche polished oil to my hands and then rubbing it together. I only use probably a dime size amount and I'm first starting on my ends and working my way up. I recommend focusing the oil on your ends because that's really where a lot of the damage is. A lot of the protein loss and cuticle chipping can happen on your ends that are already weak. So definitely start at the bottom, make sure the majority of the oil is at the bottom and any leftover excess you can carry up to the top, but I really like to avoid my scalp for this. Mainly because it can be hard when you shampoo your hair, when you have oil on your scalp, you might need to shampoo more than once to get it out and it just causes more tangles I feel like for me, so I like to keep the majority of it on my ends. So to detangle your hair when it's dry, you want to definitely only use your hands. I don't recommend using a brush at all. If you use a brush, even if it's meant for detangling, brushes just tend to cause more breakage. It might seem like they are easier to detangle your hair, but really you're just not feeling that breakage happening. Whereas when you're detangling with your fingers, you can feel every single hair, you can massage the knots and make sure that you're not snapping or breaking your hair. If you're using a brush, you can't tell as much when you are causing breakage. So that's why I recommend not using a brush when you detangle, although it seems like a brush would just be easier and faster, and it is easier and faster to detangle with a brush. But again, it's gonna cause more breakage, so I recommend just using your hands. So I like to just gently massage the knots to help remove them and just separate the hair. Once you get down to a very tiny knot, you can just separate individual hairs. This is something that a brush cannot do. Whereas if you're using your fingers, you can really feel where those are and prevent that breakage. Also, when you're using your hands, you can remove the loose hairs. I shed so much when I do this because all of those hairs from the whole week of not washing my hair are stuck in my hair because when our hair is curly, it doesn't easily release those loose hairs. Whereas when your hair is straight, you know, you can brush it or they fall out a lot easier. Curly hair, all of those loose hairs get stuck in the knots. They also cause more tangles. So majority of the tangles are from those loose hair shedding. So don't be alarmed when you're seeing a lot of hair come out when you're detangling. A lot of it is just from where you haven't washed your hair for several days. So then I'm just working my way up to the upper sections of my hair. Another thing I wanted to throw out is make sure that you are sleeping on a satin or silk pillowcase and or wearing your hair up in a satin scarf or a satin bonnet. I prefer sleeping in a bonnet. Um, I really just like a bonnet because it keeps your hair up off of your neck. I have a whole video though all about how to reduce breakage and tangles, so I will put that down below. So after I'm done finger detangling my hair, you want to let it sit for at least 30 minutes. The longer your hair sits, the better because the oils are gonna soak in over time. You don't wanna go right in and shampoo your hair because it can be really difficult to remove those oils and it's hard to get that shampoo to lather up when you have so much oil in your hair. So just make sure you let it sit for a while. I made this mistake many times because I'll forget to do this step and then I'll just want to hop in the shower. 
but it can just cause more tangles and be a mess when you try to put shampoo right on all this oil. Another mistake that I made when I first started doing pre-poo treatments is I applied way too much oil. You just want to see a little bit of a shine on your hair and just be able to feel it somewhat, but you don't want your hair to be so greasy that it's getting all over your shirt and all over your skin. That means that you've applied too much oil. It's gonna be so hard to shampoo that out and take several shampoos and you're just wasting shampoo. So I definitely recommend just using a little bit. So the next step is to actually go in and wash my hair. So I'm gonna get in the shower. I like to wet my hair down pretty good. It's gonna take a little bit longer for your hair to get wet when you have the oil because the oil is repelling the water. So I like to first start off with a conditioner. Y'all have probably seen me do this in videos before. I have a video all about how to wash curly hair and I always recommend starting with a conditioner even if you've already dry detangled because once your hair gets wet, it's still going to tangle up because you're changing that structure of your hair by adding the water in, so it's still going to stick together. So I like to just use a little bit of conditioner to further finger detangle my hair because it still tangles back up once my hair gets wet. I'm using this one from Trey Lux. It's the untie the knot leave-in conditioner. You can also use this in the shower. You don't have to just use it as a leave-in. This has really great ingredients for adding slip and smoothing the hair. So if you have high porosity hair, I highly recommend starting off with this first. So after my hair is good and wet and completely detangled, then I usually go in with shampoo at this point. So for my shampoo today, I'm going to be using the clarifying shampoo from Bounce Curl. Using a clarifying shampoo is a great way to remove oil and I recommend doing a clarifying treatment at least once a month, but it depends on your hair type and what products that you use. If you have a lot of buildup on your hair from products, then you might need to clarify it more frequently. I don't always do this. I've been clarifying maybe twice a month now or three times a month now. Um, so I've really been enjoying this Bounce Curl Clarifying Shampoo. This also has ingredients that are great at removing hard water buildup. So if you do have hard water, then this is a good option. It does foam up a lot. I also like the nozzle that this shampoo has so I can get it right at my root. You might find that you also have to shampoo twice. Um, if you feel like you still have buildup on your scalp or if you feel like your hair is just sticky and doesn't feel the same after you finish shampooing, then you might need to shampoo a second time to make sure you remove those oils. It might seem weird to just be removing all of those oils that you put in, but if you're using oils that are penetrating for the hair, then they've soaked into the cuticle, so it's not going to just be removing everything. That oil is still going to help protect your hair and help protect the cuticle of your hair when you're shampooing, but you do have to get rid of that oil because you can't leave the oil on your hair because your stylers aren't gonna soak in. So after I'm done using a clarifying shampoo, I always follow up with a deep conditioner, which I'm actually going to do when I get out of the shower. But first I'm going to use a little bit more of the Trey Lux Untie the Knot Leave-In Conditioner just to help detangle my hair so it's not a tangled mess when I'm going in with my deep conditioner, but you could skip this step and then just go straight in with your deep conditioner. So then I just follow up with the rest of my styling routine and dry my hair and these are my final results after I am done. So overall, I really recommend trying a pre-poo treatment before you go in and shampoo your hair. If you suffer from a lot of breakage and you don't know why you have breakage happening, if you don't really wear your hair up tight and you do all the steps like you're supposed to when you're sleeping with your curls and you're still getting breakage, then it could be from your detangling process. If you decide to try out dry detangling and using oils before shampoo, definitely be sure to let me know. You can leave it in the comments down below or send me a DM on Instagram. I would love to hear about your experience and I'm open to answering your questions as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have that blog post that I mentioned linked in the description box down below where I'll list out all the steps for this. I'll also list out the ingredients to look for when you're choosing an oil and I will link you to the products that I mentioned in this video. So if you haven't yet seen the rest of the Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist that will also be linked in the info card and the description box down below. That playlist contains tons of videos for beginners where I break things down in very easy to follow steps so you can learn how to take care of your curls. So thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on those post notifications if you want to be notified when I post my next video and I will see you back next week. Bye everyone.